Hi friends, welcome! For the next three weeks, I want to focus on the upcoming Halloween. Of course, this cat doesn't have to be a Halloween cat. You can make her for you to cuddle with for any occasion. This crochet pattern is not difficult to do and I would even say it's easy to do. However, I'm classifying this tutorial as intermediate level simply because of the yarn I used. For the crochet materials, you will need Bernard Felford yarn in Blackbird, 5mm crochet hook or you can use any yarn and hook of your choice as always, stitch marker, stitch counter, scissor, some pins or double pointed needles to hold things in place, yarning needle to sew the body parts together, and some fillings of your choice. I will always encourage you to be creative, so do whatever you like for the face embroidery and detailing. But if you do want to make the exact same cap, here are the materials you'll need. 18mm safety eyes, some decorative fabric for the ears and paws, a bit of Bernard Felfet yarn in Grey Orchid for the nose, 3-ply gold yarn for eyelash and cheek embroidery, gold thread for sewing the ears and paws, sewing needle, some leftover thick paper or thin cardboard for tracing, and some ball pins. I purchased most of these materials from Amazon and I'll be linking them in the description. Please use my link if you do decide to buy them. Thanks friends! Let's start by crocheting the body. Starting from the top, we are going to make the neck. Round 1 6 single crochet in the magic ring I'll also be linking video tutorials on the top right hand corner as we go along I'm going to use a stitch marker to mark the first stitch I needed to crochet this cat mostly by feel because we can't see the stitches due to the texture of the yarn so apologies in advance if today's tutorial will be harder to follow than normal. But I will have the pattern up on the screen as we go along step by step to help as much as I can. Pull the beginning tail to tighten the magic ring. Now we want to join our live stitch to the first stitch where we have marked it with a stitch marker. Round 2. Invisible increase, single crochet, Repeat this three times in total. We will have nine stitches at the end of the round. That's one invisible increase done. Use a stitch marker to mark the first stitch in the round. Doing single crochet now. Now repeat the sequence, so invisible increase, single crochet, invisible increase, and last single crochet. Round 3, 9 single crochet. Use a stitch marker to mark the first stitch in the round. Round 4, single crochet, invisible increase, single crochet, repeat this 3 times in total and we'll end up with 12 stitches at the end of the round. 
So that's single crochet done. Moving on to invisible increase. Now single crochet. Repeating the sequence. So single crochet. Invisible increase. Single crochet. Single crochet. Invisible increase. Single crochet. Round five, 12 single crochet. Use a stitch marker to mark the first stitch in the round. I recently purchased Burnett Velvet Yarn and oh my god, I am in love. It feels so soft to the touch and honestly, now I feel like I don't know what I'm going to do with my existing two bucket stashes of yarn. Round 6. Invisible increase. 3 single crochet. Repeat this 3 times in total. We'll have 15 stitches at the end of the round. Use a stitch marker to mark the first stitch in the round. 3 single crochet. Invisible increase. Three single crochet, invisible increase, and last three single crochet. Round seven, fifteen single crochet. Use a stitch marker to mark the first stitch in the round. Round 8, 2 single crochet, invisible increase, 2 single crochet. Repeat this sequence 3 times in total. We'll end up with 18 stitches at the end of the round. The second single crochet, invisible increase. Two single crochet. Repeat. Two single crochet. Invisible increase. Two single crochet. Two single crochet. Invisible increase. And last two single crochet. I think you get the idea. Round nine. Eighteen single crochet. Use a stitch marker to mark the first stitch in the round. Round 10, invisible increase, five single crochet. Repeat the sequence three times in total. We'll have 21 stitches at the end of the round.
round 11, 21 single crochet. Round 12, 3 single crochet, invisible increase, 3 single crochet. Repeat this sequence 3 times in total, we'll end up with 24 stitches at the end of the round. When you finish round 12, you should have a cone-like shape like this. This is the neck and torso area. We are going to continue and finish the rest of the body shape now. Round 13, invisible increase, 3 single crochet. Repeat this sequence 6 times in total. We'll end up with 30 stitches at the end of the round. Round 14, 2 single crochet. Invisible increase. Four single crochet, invisible increase. Repeat this five times in total. Then finish with two single crochet. We'll end up with 36 stitches at the end of the round. Round 15, invisible increase, five single crochet. Repeat the sequence six times in total. We'll end up with 
42 stitches at the end of the round. Now we are going to stop increasing and starting to work on the bottom part of the body. At the end of round 15, the shape looks something like this. It looks like a cone sideways, but from the top, you can see how it's getting bigger. Time to grab your stitch counter. Round 16 to 20, 42 single crochet. I'll see you at the end of round 20. At the end of round 20, this is what the shape looks like. Now we are going to start decreasing for the butt shape of the cat. Round 21, invisible decrease, 5 single crochet. Repeat this sequence 6 times in total, we'll end up with 36 stitches in the round. Round 22, start with 2 single crochet Then invisible decrease Then, 4 single crochet in visible decrease, repeat this sequence 5 times in total.
and finish with two single crochet. We will have 30 stitches at the end of the round. Round 23. Start with invisible decrease, three single crochet. Repeat the sequence five times in total. Then, invisible decrease. Two single crochet. Finish with slip stitch. We'll end up with 24 stitches at the end of the round. This is what it looks like at the end of round 23. We are mostly done and going to finish off the bottom part of the body now. At round 24, we are going to create an edging shape to make the bottom more flat. This will help with the ability of the cat to sit. Round 24. Back loop only 24 single crochet. If you find this video useful, please like and share to spread it with your friends and family. Or if you have any constructive feedback that you think can improve the video further, please also let me know in the comments below. Thank you! Start stuffing here first. Focus on shaping the neck part. Don't be afraid to pull and stretch your stitches. This will help shaping up your amigurumi. When you are happy with the neck part, let's proceed to round 25. Round 25, single crochet, invisible decrease, single crochet. Repeat this sequence six times in total. We'll end up with 18 stitches at the end of the round. Round 26, invisible decrease, single crochet, repeat the sequence six times in total, we'll end up with 12 stitches at the end of the round.
Before finishing round 27, let's stuff some more and continue shaping the cat. Round 27, 6 invisible decrease. We'll end up with 6 stitches at the end of the round. The last stitch might be a bit hard and tight, but with patience and keep trying, we'll get it. Leave enough tail for seaming. Cut, pull through. Grab the yarn needle and let's finish and close the body. Insert the needle in the middle of the hole and exit anywhere in the body. Insert the needle to a stitch next to it and exit anywhere on the other side. Repeat one last time for extra security. Cut remaining yarn. Using the back of the yarning needle, push any excess yarn back inside the body. That's the body done. For the head, Start with creating a magic ring. Round 1 12 single crochet in the magic ring. Grab a stitch marker to mark the first stitch. Just like the body, I will always mark the first stitch of every single round. Pull the beginning tail to tighten the magic ring. Round 2. Invisible increase, single crochet. Repeat the sequence 6 times in total. We will have 18 stitches at the end of the round. Mark the first stitch in the round using a stitch marker. That's the first sequence done. Five more to go. Round 3. Single crochet, invisible increase, single crochet. Repeat this sequence 6 times in total. We'll end up with 24 stitches at the end of the round. Mark the first stitch in the round. That's 
That's the first sequence done. Five more to go. Round four, invisible increase, three single crochet. Repeat this six times in total. We'll end up with 30 stitches at the end of the round. Mark the first stitch in the round. That's the first sequence done. Five more to go. Round 5, 9 single crochet, invisible increase, repeat this sequence 3 times in total, we will end up with 33 stitches at the end of the round. Mark the first stitch in the round. That's the first sequence done. Two more to go. Round 6, 5 single crochet, invisible increase, 5 single crochet, repeat this sequence 3 times in total, we will end up with 36 stitches at the end of the round. That's the first sequence done. Two more to go. Round seven. Invisible increase, 11 single crochet. Repeat this sequence three times in total. We will end up with 39 stitches at the end of the round. Mark the first stitch in the round. That's the first sequence done. Two more to go.
Round 8. 6 single crochet, invisible increase, 6 single crochet, repeat this sequence 3 times in total. We will end up with 42 stitches at the end of the round. That's the first sequence done. Two more to go. Round nine. Invisible increase, 13 single crochet, repeat the sequence, 3 times in total, we will end up with 45 stitches at the end of the round. That's the first sequence done. Two more to go. Round 10, 7 single crochet, invisible increase, 7 single crochet. Repeat this sequence 3 times in total, we will end up with 48 stitches at the end of the round. Mark the first stitch in the round. This is what the head shape looks like so far. Now we are going to start decreasing the round shape of the head. Round 11, three single crochet, invisible decrease, three single crochet. Repeat this sequence six times in total. We will end up with 42 stitches at the end of the round.
That's the first sequence done. Five more to go. Round 12, invisible decrease, 5 single crochet, repeat this sequence 6 times in total, we will end up with 36 stitches at the end of the round. Mark the first stitch in the round. That's the first sequence done. Five more to go. Round 13, 2 single crochet, invisible decrease, 2 single crochet. Repeat this sequence 6 times in total. We will end up with 30 stitches at the end of the round. That's the first sequence done. Five more to go. Round 14, invisible decrease, 3 single crochet, repeat this sequence 6 times in total, we will end up with 24 stitches at the end of the round. Mark the first stitch in the round. That's the first sequence done. Five more to go. Round 15, single crochet, invisible decrease, single crochet. Repeat this sequence six times in total. We will end up with 18 stitches at the end of the round.
Let's stop here now to close our magic ring. Using our yarn needle, insert the needle through the middle beginning hole. We want to close this middle hole by weaving through our top stitches only in clockwise motion. This yarn is quite slippery as it's super smooth and velvety, so you can see me slipping at times. When we are done, insert the needle back in the middle hole, pull and the hole will close seamlessly. Stuff here first. Use your hand to mold and get the shape of the head. Now it's time to attach the safety eyes if you are using them. We are going four stitches down. And six stitches gap in between the eyes. Please ignore all the extra pins as I'm getting inspiration for what I want to do with the rest of the face embroidery later. So these locations might change and we are just focusing on the safety eyes for now. Now let's finish the head. Round 16, invisible decrease, single crochet. Repeat this sequence six times in total. You will end up with 12 stitches at the end of the round. That's the first sequence done. Five more to go. Round 17, single crochet, invisible decrease, repeat this sequence 4 times in total. We will end up with 8 stitches at the end of the round. Three more to go. Leave long enough tail for sewing and seaming the head to the body later. Cut the yarn. Pull through. The idea is to have a bit of the pointy part of the body inside the head to help keep the head stable. Set the head aside for now. Moving on to the ears now. 
we will be making two of these start by creating a magic ring round one six single crochet in the magic ring don't forget to use a stitch marker to mark the first stitch in the round Pull the beginning tail to tighten the magic ring. Now we want to join our live stitch to the first stitch where we have marked it with a stitch marker. Round 2. 6 single crochet. Oh dear, I just found out that the ears video somehow got corrupted. So what I will do is I'll show you the pattern here as we go along and also the technique to do it once then I'll have to fast forward to the next round as I won't have the full progress video for this one other than that everything is the same so don't worry we will be okay round three six invisible increase we will end up with 12 stitches at the end of the round Round 4 and 5, 12 single crochet. Round 6, single crochet, invisible increase. Repeat this sequence 6 times in total. We'll end up with 18 stitches at the end of the round. Mark the first stitch in the round. Round 7, 18 single crochet. Fold in half to make the ear. We don't need any stuffing for this ones. Set aside for now. We will be making two for the arms as well. Start by creating a magic ring. Round one, six single crochet in the magic ring. Mark the first stitch in the round. Pull the beginning tail to tighten the magic ring. Now we want to join our live stitch to the first stitch where we have marked it with a stitch marker. Round 2. Single crochet, invisible increase. Repeat this sequence 3 times in total. We'll end up with 9 stitches at the end of the round. That's the first sequence done. Two more to go. Round three. Start with invisible increase. Mark the first stitch in the round. Then two single crochet. Repeat this sequence one more time. Round four. 
then invisible increase single crochet finish with slip stitch we will end up with 12 stitches at the end of the round now we are going to stop increasing for the base of the pole and going to start to work on the height of the shape round four back loop only 12 single crochet mark the first stitch in the round Round 5 to 7, 12 single crochet. Mark the first stitch in the round. We are going to start decreasing here slightly. Round 8, single crochet, invisible decrease, single crochet. Repeat this sequence three times in total. We will end up with nine stitches at the end of the round. That's the first sequence done. Two more to go. Round nine to twelve, nine single crochet. Mark the first stitch in the round. We are going to start stuffing now. When doing the stuffing, we want to focus on the bottom pole area, but try not to stuff too much in the middle arm section. We can press down on the bottom where we did the back loop only earlier to get a flatter bottom shape. Round 13 single crochet invisible decrease repeat the sequence three times in total and we will end up with six stitches at the end of the round That's the first sequence done. Two more to go. We're getting there. We only have the tail left now. For the tail, start with the magic ring.
Round one, six single crochet in the magic ring. Mark the first stitch in the round. Pull the beginning tail to tighten the magic ring. Now we want to join our life stitch to the first stitch where we have marked it with a stitch marker. Round two, six single crochet. Mark the first stitch in the round. Round three, invisible increase, two single crochet, repeat this sequence two times in total. We will end up with eight stitches at the end of the round. Round 4 to 31, 8 single crochet. Don't be afraid to stretch your stitches and shape as we go. Pull the beginning tail and just leave it hanging over partially outside. From round 11, we are going to start stuffing as the opening shape is quite small. So if we don't start stuffing now, it will be hard later when it gets too long. Do not overstuff the tail or later it won't be able to bend. As we keep crocheting and stuffing, this beginning tail will slowly and naturally end up more and more inside the tail and it will disappear eventually. Leave enough tail for seaming later on. Cut and pull through. Set aside the tail for now. We are up to the embroidery now. Remember that this step is optional. You may decide to use felt and glue or just leave the ear as is. It's up to you. For the ear embroidery, grab a scrap of thick paper or thin cardboard for tracing purpose. We are going to trace the ear shape now. Roughly is fine. Cut around a little bit smaller. Clean up the shape carefully. After we clean up the shape, we will end up with something like this. Mine is approximately 8 mm smaller than the ear. Grab our chosen fabric, turn it around and trace the back.
we will need two of this. We want the bottom part of the ear longer, so we can actually fold the fabric inside the ear. I'm measuring mine approximately 2cm longer. We are going to start from the bottom left of the ear, going in clockwise direction. Put the beginning tail inside the ear and let's start embroidery. Now for the embroidery, we are going to do overlock blanket stitch with the V-shaped variation. Blanket stitch overlock and prevent our fabric from fraying in the future. Plus, it looks pretty and decorative. So insert your gold thread to the needle and make sure to leave a really long thread for this one as we need to have enough thread to sew the ear to the top of the head. I actually leave approximately one meter long thread on mine. Join the end threads so both threads are the same length as we want to use both threads to do the stitch. Use a ball pin to hold them in place. First, insert the needle through the ear piece only. Note that we are not touching the fabric yet. Insert vertically upward. Then, insert through the fabric and also go vertically upward. Now we want to loop one of the thread like this. Note that I'm holding the end of the thread with my left hand. We want the end thread to be placed on the left hand side. This will make things easier later when we are finishing the stitching. Next, insert the needle through the fabric, exiting vertically upwards, looping the thread. And repeat. Keep going in clockwise direction. I 
I'm planning to do a full detailed video tutorial for this embroidery technique hopefully in a few weeks times because my renovation is still very hectic right now when it's ready I'll make sure to link it on the top right hand corner of this video and also in the description I still want to do the witch hat and the cat bell though right now I really don't know when I'm gonna get time to do them I'm just gonna keep trying my best so thanks for being here and being patient with me When we have reached the edge of the right ear, fold the leftover fabric inside the ear. Leave the thread aside for now. Don't cut anything. Set up the cat body and head. I'm using knitting double pointed needles to just hold it in place. Take your time and make sure you find the center of the head and stab it down to the body. We want to place the ear two stitches from the top of the head for our ear location. As for the bottom ear, I'm placing it two stitches down from the eye line. Please take your time here to make sure you are happy with the location and everything is symmetrical. Check all the angles to make sure things line up. Once you are happy, grab the yarning needle and we are gonna start attaching the back of the ear to the head.
Once all the back side is attached, stop here and let's continue on the front of the ear embroidery first. Now that we've reached the end, we completed the first ear. Repeat for the second one.
To finish off, hide all the yarn back inside. As for the gold thread, you can tie a few knots of the beginning and the end threads together. And put any leftover thread back inside. Now moving on to the pole embroidery. Look around for a circular object in your home. Slightly smaller diameter than the pole. We're going to use this to trace. I have actually traced and cut mine. We all crochet with different tension. So our plushie will vary in size. But what I'm using is 30 millimeter diameter. Grab your ball pin to mark the location of the fabric to the plushie and to hold it in place. Just like the ear embroidery, insert your first needle on the plushie. There is no needle on the fabric yet. Exit vertically upwards. Now insert straight through the fabric Exit vertically up and we are going to loop one of the thread here. Ensure the beginning thread is located on the left hand side. We are going to go clockwise. When all the stitches are done, we will be back at the beginning point again. To finish off, tie a few knots with the beginning and the end threads together. Put all the remaining threads back inside the arm. Repeat for the other arm.
set aside for now. Let's do the face embroidery next. Let's start by using the ball pin to mark the location of the nose. Use three ball pins to mark the place, making sure things are symmetrical. Two pins on the top, one pin in the middle. It will form a triangular shape. I'm going to be using Bernard Velvet Yarn in Grey Orchid. Insert your needle from the bottom hole to the top left hand side. Go across to the right and diagonally down the middle. Pull gently here. We are going to loop the yarn. So make sure your life stitch is above the loop shape. I'll be doing a full detail face embroidery tutorial later on. I'll be linking it in this video when it's ready. Now insert the needle vertically down and exit through that head hole. Secure it by tying a few knots Cut and put the remaining yarn back inside the head. Now let's do the whiskers. First mark it using the ball pin. Check carefully to make sure they are symmetrical. Mine measures approximately 3 cm long with 2.5 cm distance. I'm using 3 ply gold yarn and joining the end threads together so they are double the thickness. Again, insert your needle from the head hole, exiting to the inner right cheek, going across to the top right. Back to the inner right cheek. Then lastly to the bottom right. From here, exit to the inner left cheek. Then going to the top left. Exiting back to the inner left cheek. Then lastly, to the bottom left and exiting at the hole of the head. Tie a few knots to secure. Cut and put back any remaining yarn back inside the head. Let's do the eyelash next. Using the same 3 ply gold yarn, insert the yarn inside the safety eyes. Twist it. Then tie a couple of knots. and trim the excess.
Repeat this two more times on the right eye. Then we're going to do it on the left eye. We will end up with six lashes on each eye. I came up with this technique myself. Not sure if um, anyone has done this before. I think the end result looks really adorable. Position the lashes to your liking, then use a scissor to trim them down. I like to have slightly shorter eyelash on the outside and longer in the center. Now we are going to attach the head to the body next. I'm using double pointed needles to hold the head and body in place. Once happy with the position, use the yarning needle and that yarn attached to the head to secure the head to the body. I'm attaching the arm in the middle area of the body. They are about four stitches apart from each other. We want the arms to touch the ground and not float. Make sure you are happy with the position and they are symmetrical. Use your pins, take your time. We want to make sure all our hard work crocheting the pieces earlier paid off. We don't want to end up with loop-sided arms after all our hard work. Once you are happy with how things are looking, same thing, use the yarning needle to attach it to the body.
Once we finished, exit the last needle to the back of the body. Take off the needle and leave it for now. We will finish this together when we have done the other arm. Repeat for the other arm now. Once we finish, exit the last needle on the exact same spot where we exit on the other arm earlier. Tie a couple of knots together. Use the back of the needle to push the remaining yarn back inside the body. Now for the tail, we are going to attach the tail so they curve sideways. Make sure the tail is in the center at the back. Start sewing it on. We are so close now, I hope you are still with me. If you have any questions, just ask me in the comments and I will try my best to help. I'm thinking to do a smaller variation with the cat, like a keyring perhaps, with a different yarn. Maybe they will look really cute together, like a mom and a baby kitten. Um, should I do that? Finish off as usual. Ta-da! We are finally done! I'm honestly super proud of this cat plushie. She came out exactly like how I wanted it in my mind. I showed it to my best friend and she said she wants to have it. And to me, that's the greatest compliment. In my next to-do list, I'll be making a removable cat bell accessory to go with this cat. I hope to see you there.